you're right, Marvin. The first property is usually the most difficult, no? Not only financially, but uh, this is your first, uh, no, first time to get your feet wet. So a lot of fear, a lot of uncertainty. But here's the story. Here's Marvin, the scoop. Nobody knows about this one, huh? But exclusive! Exclusive, <laughs> no? We're here to interview one of the most sought after interviews that we had in the past. So you were asking about his life, how he made his money, and how he grew in the real estate market. The one and only. Hey, Carly. it's me again. Yeah, I'm Carly. Back. We're taking a lot of his time right now, but thank you so much for inviting us. Thank you for, for coming here, Marvin. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. So, how did things start? Right, little boy. I guess uh, <laughs> it all started when I was 12 years old. That's, that's a very significant um, milestone in my life. At 12 years old, I was in school. I wanted this push button pencil box. Can you relate? Yeah, push button pencil box. It goes up, you know, and it open. And I told my mom, I mom, mom, I want this pencil box. My mom told me a very important uh, statement that I cannot forget. Sabi niya, okay, enough. We cannot afford the pencil box. Wala tayong budget. If you want this pencil box, two things. Either you become an honor student and I'll buy you the pencil box, or you have to work for yourself, work for your own money. So I said, okay, I'll give it, I'll give it a shot. No, I, I studied hard. And I ended up getting a, a pasang awa grade, not an honor student. So I said, okay, this will not work. So at 12 years old, I eventually started to earn my own money as a delivery boy in Binondo. So as I was delivering stuff, riding my bicycle around Binondo. And it was there that my eyes were opened to see the difference between a working class and a businessman. The working class kasi will, will really exchange their time for money. They, they exchange their physical effort to get money. Pero yung mga wealthy, they think about uh, scalability, they think about trading, they think about leveraging other people, and they're okay not to do it themselves. vis a let's say, my working class mindset, lagging may wait if I do it myself. If I'm good, if I'm magaling, if I spend physical time. vis a a businessman, and they just sit in the office and they delegate, they have systems in place. No? So I would see the wealthy businessman in Binondo, Chinatown, most of them would have properties. So that's where I started to see the opportunities of property. All right, so from 12 years old to the time you were starting to earn your yeah. own money, how did you get the funding wow. for that as well? Okay, Tito Marvin, this is very intimate. I've never shared it with anybody except... Exclusive! Uh, exclusive, exclusive. Here, no? So You need money to, to buy properties. No? So I eventually went into architecture school because I believe that uh, construction and property is something for me. People ask me, Carl, why did you go into architecture? Are you good in drawing? Are you good in uh, engineering? I go, no, no. I was just so bad in school, ang sabi nila sa akin, take up architecture, Carl, kasi wala kang aaralin dun. Drawing na ng drawing and you will pass. So I took up architecture and uh, I, I, that's slowly I got into property. And then I, I worked for Architect Palafox while they were doing Rockwell. So I saw how Rockwell started as a power plant then eventually became this beautiful building and beautiful community. You know, when you're studying architecture uh, school, your dream job is to be in this beautiful building in Ayala Avenue. So 2002, I finally got my wish. I got accepted to work for Ayala Land. No? I worked as a starter salesperson in Ayala Land and eventually was offered to become a manager, then eventually a director. Your question, Marvin, how did I get money to buy my first property? No? So you're right, Marvin, the first property is usually the most difficult. No? Not only financially, but uh, this is your first, uh, no, first time to get your feet wet. So a lot of fear, a lot of uncertainty. But here's the story. Here's Marvin, the scoop. Nobody knows about this one. Huh? But exclusive! Exclusive, <laughs> no? When I first got money, me and my sister, Isel, we invested in a food cart. Yeah, in a food cart. But mm. in, so it's food cart. Uh, investment was not so high. And that food cart would make around 30,000, 35,000. How old were you at this time? I think uh, I was 25, okay. 25 ish at that time. Still Five years single. working now, okay. Yeah, it made mga 30,000, 35,000 a month. And, I, and my, me and my sister, we brainstormed and said, okay, what are we gonna do with this 30,000? If we split it, take 15,000 a month, time. it's not really big amount of money. So why don't we buy a condo and pay that monthly amortization for five years, 35,000? That's where I started. So, my our first condo, it was the food cart profit who paid for the monthly amortization of the condo. So fast forward, after five years, the condo is now there. It's earning twenty plus thousand a month in rental. 
So we paid 35 for five years, and now it's it's bringing in 25,000 a month for more than maybe eight years already. So it's gonna be like a perpetual source of income. But you ask me what happened to my food cart? That small food cart, wala na, unfortunately, it closed down na. Okay. But but how many years did it that last? That food cart, maybe I don't know, maybe five years. Okay. No? So it paid for the property. <laughs> so anakatuwa dito, the food cart is gone. But the hard asset property is there. It's there. And it's still going strong until today. But there's a very, very good principle there. No, you got business income and then transferred it into investment yes. income. Yep. Yep. So from there, from 25 to 40, what, what happened? Wow. Because of my exposure with the wealthy clients of Ayala, I somehow got a sneak peek into their, their mindset. Eh? So I, I strongly believe because an average person and a wealthy person sometimes can be given the same set of cards but the wealthy person might see things differently right that's right try to hang out with you so at least i get that mindset eh. right? so okay. it's really the mindset so i i was in that circle of uh, businessman mindset really people who are who are willing to take risks and willing to fail i think uh if you were to ask me what was the biggest lesson when i was young was I was given an approval or like a, a go signal that it's okay to fail, it's okay to make mistakes. The best time to do your failure and mistakes is when you're when you're young, no? So I took a lot of early risk when I was younger. A lot of it involves financial risk, uh, buying properties, stretching myself, taking loans, and somehow it all panned out the mind. So properties that were, were used to be two million before, uh, became 4 million. So that's how you double your asset. Eh? Wasn't it a bit scary na you took the job, took the risk of taking out a loan? Kasi kahit ako hanggang ngayon, I'm, I'm still ano eh, uh, hesitant about oh, yeah. about paying interest rates. Kasi I, parang, I, I, I keep thinking na, what's gonna happen 5 years, 10 years along the line? I can't project my cash flow at that point. Parang what what pushed you na, you know, yeah, I, can, you know, I, can, I, can, I can still do it. I don't know. One thing that I, 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 as I look back, no, it's not that I'm magaling or I had some analysis. It's because I'm not intelligent. I'm not really that smart. So when things were happening and my mentors were telling me to do this, do that, I just took their advice. So I guess now I look back and say, wow. Now I, I, I learned to analyze more. It gets more scary if you analyze so much. So when I was younger, I was 20 plus year old, I was just taking a lot of risk, unnecessarily risk, uh, without really knowing what's ahead of me. But a uh, good thing I survived those risks. And uh, you kind of like grow your asset base uh, after that risk. All right, just to close. So All right. how do you advise people who are starting out like you also that they probably didn't have a clue also on where to do, what to start? Or how could they possibly grow wealth? And how can they use real estate, real estate or property investing to make that happen? All right. Uh, I guess uh, first things first, you have to really educate yourself. Maybe ako, I, I took a lot of risks. I took a lot of things I don't know. I entered into spaces I don't know. But I was mentored by by the wealthy clients that I, that I was with no, before. So you know the difference. I personally, I'm not that intelligent. I'm not that smart. But. I had the guidance of mentors. So number one is to educate yourself. And if you're going to property, always remember, property is long-term. Yon. So long-term mindset is better than a short-term mindset. I hope this video is something that's very helpful to you and I hope that it helps you reach your goals of financial freedom. So see you all again soon. See ya.